Joining me today is New Hampshire Senator Jerry Little. Jerry, thanks so much for being here. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, you, you know, I, I want to start focusing on the still the news in New Hampshire is the uh, budget. The governor's now vetoed it. Yep. Um, I don't think she's vetoed the continuing res resolution. She has not. I, I suspect she won't. Um, she won't. She's told us that she'll <laughs> sign it. Um, so, you know, talk to me about you, the Senate's budget. Uh, in comparison to the House budget and sort of in comparison to the uh, governor's budget. Certainly. Um, you know, the governor's budget is, is is sort of the wish list that starts the ball rolling, and that is presented to us back in February. The House steps in, and they've got, got about six weeks, maybe a little bit less, to go through an entire thousand-plus page document and make any changes that they're going to make. They're handicapped by the fact that we don't have very good data at that point in time on what we're expecting for revenues. And so the House budget that came out was, I think by everybody's measure, quite harsh. Um, cut a lot of programs and services in the state of New Hampshire, but it was what they were, the job they were left to do, given the fact that they have to present a balanced budget. Uh, the Senate benefits from the fact that we have another quarter's worth of financial data. We also benefited from the fact that the trending is very good on revenues for the, st for the state of New Hampshire. And so we had about $110 million more million to spend uh, than, the, than the House did in, in their cycle. So we spent that money, and, and in doing so, we were able to roll back in many of the programs that the House was forced to cut. We were also able to make uh, proposed increases on spending on uh, uh, mental health care, developmental disabilities, the wait lists, uh, services for seniors, Meals on Wheels, uh, service link, choices for independent spending. We actually increased for the first time in, I think, six or eight years the reimbursement rates that the state is going to pay to the home health care uh, companies. We increased by 75 percent over current spending levels the amount of money that will be spent on substance abuse. So a lot of good went into that budget. Uh, the uh, the governor proposed uh, a 1.5 excuse me 11.5 billion dollar budget. The Senate came in at 11.35, uh, and that's pretty much where we ended up after the committee of conference with the House. The House accepted by and large uh, the recommendations for increases and changes that were made by the Senate. So it's it's a fairly slight difference between the governor's budget and the budget as uh, agreed to by the committee of conference in the legislature between the House. In the Senate. And, and the uh, budget previously was $10.7 billion? Yes. So, I mean, it is, it is an increase. It's a significant increase um, over the current level of spending. Um, but the governor vetoed it, and, and you've heard her reasons. Yeah. Um, frankly, I think it's a head scratcher because there is so much good in this budget. I mean, you saw social service agencies and nonprofit organizations stepping out in the past week saying, this is the best budget we've seen in a decade. Um, that's their quote, not mine, even though I do believe it's the best budget that's put together for the state of New Hampshire in a, in a very long time. Um, the governor's opposition, as I've, I've not had a conversation with the governor, but as I've read, is that she's opposed to the, um, the very slight decreases that we've proposed in business taxes in the state of New Hampshire. She, that's the business enterprise and business profits tax? That's correct. Um, the fact that uh, the state employee pay raise that she negotiated has not been fun funded, and uh, nor did we act this year to extend expanded Medicaid. Um, that is not set to sunset until the end of 2016. We feel, those of us in the uh, Republican side in the Senate and in the House, that we don't have the data necessary at this point in time to be able to make an informed decision about expanded, extending expanded Medicaid. My prediction is that it probably will be um, extended. But we need to have information to back up the decision. Uh, Medicaid expansion happened July, so not quite a year ago, July 1st, 2014, last year. The program really had to be stood up and then needed enrollment, and so people didn't start receiving benefits until August of last year. So we've got about uh, um, 10, 11 months worth of experience to deal with. In the world of insurance and in public policy, that's simply not enough time to get a trend so you know whether or not the policy is in fact working. So we've committed to working on that the rest of this year and to bring forward legislation in 2016 
seen relative to whether or not we expand Medicaid. Unfortunately, people are being told that if we don't do it this year, that 40,000 people are going to lose their benefits. That's simply false. Hey, well, let's stop here and let's circle back to that in the next segment. 